Hey, this is Toby Ryan, and I'm going to show you how to install third-party plugins in GarageBand so you can take advantage of things like synthesizers, samplers, all the kind of different kinds of effects like reverbs and delays and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing we're going to do is open up an empty project so we can go to the GarageBand preferences and make sure that audio units is turned on. Let's go ahead to the audio MIDI tab and inside here, that's the audio units. If I click this, it'll say, do you want to disable them? And some users will have found out that this is disabled by default for some reason. I don't know why, but let's make sure that this has a check mark there and then you're good to go. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and quit out of GarageBand with command Q, don't save, and then we can begin installing. Now, if you don't see anything in this list right here, you can go to your finder preferences and inside there, click the sidebar, and it'll give you all these selections right here, and just make sure that hard disks is, has a little check mark there as well, so you can find it in the finder window down here, because we're gonna drag in component files from uh, samplers and equalizers and stuff like that. So now, once you have your audio unit downloaded from whatever developer that you want, we're going to make sure that we have the audio unit, and that's the AU. So that's what we want to install. I'm going to throw this VST away because we don't really need it for GarageBand. So double click, and some users on, on Mac users will have this enabled by default, and it prevents you from installing anything outside of the Mac App Store. So check this icon right here because we'll find it in the Apple System Preferences. And I'll show you how to disable it so then you can actually install free stuff in GarageBand. All right, so this section down here, allowed to be downloaded from, this is a security and privacy area, so go ahead and put in your admin password. And you have three options for security, and this one is only from the Mac App Store. This one is from Mac App Stores and certified or identified developers. And basically what that means is uh, people who sell their plugins will use the identified ones, and the free plugin developers are probably just doing it for fun so they don't take the time to do the certification. But for whatever reason, the Anywhere option allows us to do this purpose and install third-party plugins this way. I'm gonna go ahead and double click, and inside here, you'll see Continue. You go through and read this giant novel of information and click Continue and uh, select your hard drive that you wanna install it on. Super easy process, it'll walk you through the whole thing. You can click Continue. It'll show you how large the file that you're gonna be installing is. Click install, type in your password, and it will do its thing, and you're, you're done. All right, so that's the package file. And some developers do DMGs, which is just another form that will open up like a folder, and they give you the component file. You click and hold, drag it into the folder, and I've already done this, so I'm gonna go ahead and click replace. Replaces with a new version. There we go. And that's it, we're done with the installation. The other thing you might find is just the component file. And while that's really great, if you don't know where the AU or the audio units folder is, that's kind of a big pain. So that thing we turned on at the beginning of the video, Macintosh hard drive, you'll navigate to your library, audio, plugins, and then your components folder. This is where the, all the audio units are stored. There's also VST, etc. But for this one, for GarageBand, we want component, click and hold, drag it in, and again, I've already done this, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace with this new version. And that's it, that's the installation process. Super easy, painless, and you're ready to fire up GarageBand again. Open up an empty project just to check and make sure your plugins are working. Click the smart controls, this little letter I. Click plugins, and then you have two selection areas, one for instruments and the other for audio effects. Now, inside the instruments, you'll go to AU Instruments, navigate to the developer name, the plugin, and then either stereo or mono, depending on the plugin. All right, so that one's working pretty good. I'm gonna close, and then I'm gonna fire up the other plugin that we installed in the audio effects. Now this one will be at the very, very bottom under audio units. We'll find the developer name, and then we'll find the plugin that we need. And there we go. Everything's working and ready for you to begin playing around and recording again. All right, so the last thing that I generally do is close out of everything, restart my computer to make sure everything's working right and showing up in the menus and stuff like that. So restart and you should be good to go. There are a whole bunch of really cool plugins out there. So Google and look for EQs, flangers, 
samplers, synthesizers. Go nuts. Have fun. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Thanks again for watching and see you later.